Just like many other people, I managed to finish Dying Light on the Nightmare difficulty and got traumatized for life. <laughs> Yeah, that was fun. Then I started to get hundreds of comments from my beautiful subscribers about this one expansion that I should really try. Dying Light. The following. And if there is one thing I could tell you about my subscribers is that they are reliable and completely sane. Except for Coochie Grabber 69. We don't talk about Coochie Grabber 69. So I'm gonna spend the next 20 days in Dying Light the following trying to fit into the society and save my people back home from dying. Light. Join me on this insane journey filled with excitement, fear, anger. How could this possibly happen? And a lot of surprises. All right, let's see what you guys voted for. Should I fight or nuke everyone? This is 20 days in the craziest zombie apocalypse on the nightmare difficulty. One day when I found myself inside a cave. Don't be surprised, this happens a lot to me. Not too long after I found my way out and got a nice view of the countryside. While I was climbing down the mountain, trying not to die, I was thinking about this strange dude who sent me here. Dude, he was talking about zombies not attacking people and the mother. Like what the f- I took the fast route and made my first contact. Unfortunately, not with a human. Bro is just chilling. Since I didn't want to make a loud noise with my shotgun and my crack pipe wasn't really made for the job, I just did what any broke fatherless woman would do in a midlife crisis. Used my feet. <sighs> Give me all your money, bitch. Not too long after I arrived at a place where I actually found human flesh. Or I don't even know if you could call them humans. They were so weird. But understand this. was dead and they all said the same thing talk to Jasir so I did just that I found him in the barn arguing with his doctor honestly I wasn't really surprised that a god girl had a bad relationship with her father I don't mean to interrupt I'm looking for Jasir I am Jasir this is Jasir head of the farm friends with the faceless probably has a 9 inch cock. I asked Jasir why don't people turn into zombies here, but instead of answering my questions, he offered me some bread and told me to go back to, well, you know where. Take some bread, my friend, and go back to Bro. However, things got a lot better after I met the entrepreneur of the countryside. My name's Khan, by the way. This is Khan. I have no idea who this dude is. He told me that the people here are in a cult, led by some woman called the Mother. But he still didn't explain why people were immune. And in exchange for more info, Khan wanted me to be his driver first. Freaks. I know what you think. A car? Here? In the apocalypse? It cannot be real, man. It is real. And it's guarded. I built up the courage and went for it. Sorry, bro. How did nobody hear the other dude falling? <laughs> okay. So far so good. Everything went perfectly fine. Until the very end. I'm so close, holy shit. <laughs> oh my god, come on. Get the fuck out of here. Call the ambulance. Call the ambulance. But not for me. <laughs> when I got back to the farm, I was so excited to show Khan the buggy. But Khan was gone. All I found in his trailer was just his daughter. Esgi, certified goat mommy, she hates being here, obviously. I would probably let her sit on my face. She told me about the water being polluted. And if I want to have people around the farm, I should check out the pumping station. Being a respectful man myself, I just said, I can show you the real pumping station. <laughs> and fired up the buggy. It didn't take me long to realize the obvious. This buggy is slow as f- But don't worry. We will do some upgrades to the bad boy later. <laughs> Turns out bandits were messing with the water at the pumping station. I tested out my negotiation skills, hoping that we could work this out, but never expect much from a man who just walked out of a cave. Wow! You wanna dance? You wanna dance? Psych! They are in the walls! After I finished off the bandits, Ooh. I checked out the main building. That was weird. You're one of the three who got lost? The only one left. 
I am Ali. This is Ali. Some kind of an engineer, likes leaking batteries. He is good with pipes. <laughs> Ali, you are a goddamn genius. Ali! Ali! Okay, I have three minutes to get to the main well. Come on, man, not like this, not like this. As I was following the pipeline, the steering wheel reminded me of the condition of my life. Not stable, not stable at all. Hopeless, crying at night, no woman. The pipes led me to a small station, where I opened the main valve and Go. saved the day. Said... Look at all these kids playing in the water, man. <laughs> They have no idea I put heroin in it. <laughs> I told Esky what I did. What the fuck? Then Jasir finally told me the secret behind the strange medicine. And the reason behind it just left me speechless. We have our faith and our prayers to the mother. I'm waiting for the punchline, man. I guess you already know that it's not just faith and prayers. Trust me, on the next day, we will look behind those curtains. On day two, I started aiding the children of the sun. This is so crazy. Now, I know this sounds strange, but let me explain. This is a member of the Faceless. They are in connection with the mother, and in order to make them trust me and tell me more about whatever the fuck is going on here, wow. I must have the people around the countryside and gain trust. This is where we are right now, and this is our goal. After I changed into my sick stranger outfit Okay, I'm gonna be completely honest with you all This looks a bit homosexual I drove to the nearest gas station and met everyone's best friend It's alright buddy, here you go Villa knows some things about cars, was a racer before the outbreak, has a sick tattoo on his head After I talked with Bilal, I'm envious of your ride. the power went offline I'm so scared right now. And this gave me the perfect opportunity to help the people. But first I stole some fuel, changed the buggy's paint job, and most importantly, installed the Bilal bubblehead. Bilal, we have a long journey ahead of us. The first thing I had to do was climb this goddamn antenna tower and get one of those. I'm gonna put that up in someone's head. Then I had to go all the way here to the Haran Dam. Where a local homeless man threw a crack pipe at me. Boy, what the hell? Boy. And then I saw it. A strange blue smoke and a member of the faceless. Okay, there is no way that they just make the zombies high. Right? Right? I gave the insulator to Ali and he asked me to go inside the dam to turn on the main power switch. Which wasn't dangerous at all and there were no deadly creatures inside. Oh great! Long time no see, brother. You would think that you need an arsenal of weapons to bring this guy down. Take this, you freak! Ha! Never mind. But the way I killed it was just something else. Ooh. Did he just trip? Sadly, Ali couldn't finish the job because the other dude just died. Ah, oh, this is so sad. Guys, send this video to someone who likes licking batteries. After I found Ali, I helped him finish the job by defending him from 10,000 homeless people on crack. And there you go, we are now a newcomer. My happiness didn't last long though. Because the next day, I made a pretty big mistake. On day 3, Jasir hit me up on the radio that he wanted to see me immediately. Bilal? Our journey continues. But on my way to the farm, a kid asked for help on the radio. And this is where I made the mistake. As I was pressing T to track the quest, I felt a weird sensation. Ah! I think my future self was trying to stop me from another universe. I'm gonna press it. <laughs> but we all know that this is every dying like player's canon event. And we cannot stop it. Alright, alright, alright. Kids, where are you? Why would a kid even come here? This place is scary as fuck. Okay. What is that? What? Hmm. Bilal. Our journey continues. Back at the farm I spoke with another acolyte. He told me that I was on the right path. 
You are on the right path. And gave me a class. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, this is pretty sick. After this, I wanted to check out a place that Bilal told me about. But it was just Jayslet selling me buggy points. Now, this could be great, but I did something better on day six. Oh my god, this is so bad! After Jayslet. I went back to Villa's gas station to accept the weirdest quest I've ever done. Well, that's a cave. Well, that sounds interesting. There is no way I'm doing this. I went to the cave's entrance and had a bunch of fun with the local kids. Leave me alone! I won't sell you sodium hypochlorite! Then I met two guys there, one of which was probably Heisenberg from Breaking Bad. Then I found a wound person who told me that the food-eating creature was his kid. Don't let him suffer. You met the wrong dude, my guy. After he died, I stole all his stuff and... It's okay, little Timmy. I won't hurt you. <laughs> Nice, we got some trust. That means one thing only. I checked the place for more loot and went back to my buggy. Bilal, I got a weird feeling about the next day. Day 4 started with a surprising encounter. I randomly met Khan and he got beaten up by the locals. I'm not even surprised, man. I'm not even surprised. Then I wanted to continue aiding the children of the sun since I was so close to the next level of trust. So I went back to the farm to check on Esgi. Bilal, I know that I only met her four days ago, but I think I'm in love. Don't look at me like that. Esgi, where are you? Esgi told me about a farm nearby where a family had been killed by bandits. And they did a really, really bad thing to this girl. This woke up the inner Batman inside me and I knew that justice must be served. Wake the fuck up, Samurai! We have a city to burn! Bilal, if I don't make this... Burn my PC, please just burn it. I parked my buggy next to the Peace River and sneaked inside without getting noticed. Then it was time for... Justice! Oh. <laughs> Who is that? Who is that? Fortnite! Ugh, that scared the shit out of me. I didn't tell you guys this before, but the bandits were holding the girl's father hostage. Release me! I couldn't find him for a long time, but then I discovered the basement with a secret room under it. And there he was, in complete shock. Kill me! Do you know what they did to this guy? They twisted his balls. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Man, I can't wait to see Vilal. I missed you, man. I told everything to Esgi and boom! A new level of trust. From this point I was an ally. But if I told you that this made things even worse, would you believe me? Well, if it isn't the consequences of my own actions. I spoke with an acolyte over the radio and he invited me to this secret ritual. Which is like 10,000 kilometers away from me. They are going to kill me or and they... Before I arrived at the ritual, I got a little present from the Teclan guards. No way! And then I started climbing the eye of the sun. I got a feeling that I should have uh, upgraded my buggy first. Who knows if things get out of hand, you know? On the left, Bilal! On the left! Ah, it's okay. During the ritual, I realized that my concerns were absolutely correct. Bro, they really just make the zombies high. What? Then I solved the mother for the first time. <gasps> oh my god! Which was insane because she started talking to me in my mind. What's happening to me? What the fuck? You know the gas lets us connect to each other with Bluetooth. Um, that's why it's blue, you know. Do you want more top tier jokes like this one? Subscribe to my channel! I passed out from the gas and woke up a couple of hours later. Saw a plane crash. Wait, I've seen this one before. And ran back to the buggy because these idiots left me there before night time. Oh no. And I don't know about you, dude. But the nights in this game or just something else. Okay, Bilal, we can do this, trust me. Just another ride in Slovakia. Why? Why? Why now? Please. It's behind me, it's behind me, it's behind me. <laughs> ah, on the left, Bilal! On the left, he's touching me! Okay, I think I can make it. It's not too far away anyway. 
I'll be there in no time. I can't, I can't, I can't. The engine is not running. Stop! Ah! Come on, come on, come on. Come on! Uh. Okay, thank you. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough! Day 6 I realized that I can't save the world with this piece of garbage. And I only knew one person that could help me with this problem. Wow. After talking for several minutes, he introduced me to the most fun thing that you can do in this game. The buggy challenges. These challenges gave me driver XP and better buggy parts. The harder the challenge, the better the parts. In order to complete these challenges, I only had to remember one thing that Bilal said to me. Pull throttle and don't look back. Some challenges were super easy. A level 5 engine for this is crazy. Some had me at the edge of my seat. I have 5 seconds. 4, Ah, yes. Yes. And some made me want to raid the developer's office. Just go up the hill, bro. It will be easy, bro. Yeah, right. Because whoever made this challenge was a fucking psychopath. Ah! <laughs> Please, I've been here the whole day. Please. Oh. In a matter of three very long days, managed to complete all of the challenges, drove thousands of kilometers and solve many interesting things. What the? For example, this cave. A volatile cave. I must check it out later, man. And this thing. <laughs> Only in Ohio. <laughs> At the end, I upgraded my buggy parts from this to this. And it went from this to this. Oh my god, this is so bad! Day 9, Jassir hit me up on the radio with some bad news. Bilal, our journey continues. Someone was messing with the water again. I told you guys many times before to stop pissing in the water. Before I checked out the pumping station again, <laughs> I upgraded my crossbow from this to this. I mean, it looks pretty sick. Because I was just feeling that danger coming, man. And I felt it coming hard. I felt it all over my face. When I arrived at the place, I saw that my concerns were right. Oh my god. And whoever did this was actually smarter than the bandits before. They locked me out. Okay. Okay. However, they did not know who they were messing with. Justice. I am literally Batman. This is my real voice, by the way. Kawabunga. <laughs> That was scary as fuck. Before I could turn the lights back on, one more bandit came out of the last room wearing Rise's uniform. Which is crazy. Guys, you won't believe what happened. I was just standing here and he just fell. I turned the lights on and made my best decision so far. I went to sleep. To refill all my energy levels. Today is a good day to be a gangster. <laughs> because on day 12, I did this. It all started on day 10, when an acolyte told me that I should check out the plane that crashed when I was at the secret ritual. Well, turns out it was these guys. We did it, we flew! Tolga and Fatin met scientists. They came up with Bitcoin. Every time they talk, I want to shove a knife into my chest. <laughs> I like them though. They are cute. They asked me to search for their billionaire boss, Mr. Walker, who jumped out of the plane and landed somewhere else. That didn't really go as they planned. Shot him straight through the head. Oh, so that's it. Mission failed, right? No. The twins got in trouble at the rail bridge. That train? What's taking you so long? Shut the fuck up. After I saved them from the bandits, <laughs> I got a new level of trust. Hey boys, we are believers! Yes! Then I met them at a random tunnel to discuss their secret plan, which will, as they said, give me a heart attack. All they needed for the project was some junk, metal parts, and tape, and nails. Can you remember all that? I was very 
close to that heart attack. I spent a couple of hours looting some places, then I gave them all the parts they needed. On day 11 they wanted fuel. So being a talented citizen of Eastern Europe, I just siphoned it out of the local cars. The owners were complaining, but I just did what I do every time this happens. Shot them with my homemade crossbow. Get the back. I went back to Tolga and Fatin, gave them the fuel and on day 12 it was showtime. So they want to go through this huge barrier with that thing. These guys are genius. This Ladies and gentlemen, we speak evolution! Ah! Yep, they are dead. Believe it or not, this wasn't the craziest thing that happened on day 12. It all started with the same blue smoke that I saw at the dead, but this time it was bigger and had some surprises. This is all you get for throwing me all those fucking rocks! Then an acolyte admitted it to me that the cure is just the blue elixir from Fortnite. That's right, the blue elixir from Fortnite. The acolyte told me that they were running out of this Fortnite thing and he sent me to a cave to get more of it. Fortnite. But before I arrived there, I made a huge mistake. I stopped at a gas whoa, station. Whoa, 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 whoa. But Shari, how is that a real problem? Shut the fuck up. How is this even possible? Oh, I get it. I parked it next to the fire. I'm such an idiot. When I arrived at the cave, I wasn't ready for what I found inside of it. A lot of dead bodies, scary military zombies. That was scary as fuck. Acolytes and rises, man. I mean, what the fuck is going on here, man? I will tell you what's going on here. Rises people stole the elixirs from Fortnite. And so the question arises. <laughs> if Rise is dead, then who the hell is leading these people? I went back to the farm to end my day, completely unaware of the fact that the next day was the beginning of something special. On day 13 I went to Bilal, my man. Let me touch your ass. He told me about the nearby city and that there were kids who needed to be, um, Calmed down. FBI open up! That was fun, but my new special adventure came right after this. Bilal, code red. I repeat, code red. The faceless lost contact with a guy who does research for them and he lives in a mansion, which is crazy. I was crazy once. When I arrived at the mansion, a huge demolisher wanted to kill me, but I just walked past him like a boss. <laughs> Stupid demolishers. What the fuck? Then I went through a scary basement because someone locked the front door. Come on, man. But eventually, I found the guy I was here for. Have you come to kill me? Fine. Go ahead. Attila does research for the faceless, huge Suicide Boys fan. He has cancer. Attila asked me to help him with his research and to hurry up because he could die in any minute. My reaction to this was a great 8 hours of sleep. Attila asked me to check out 4 cold places. The first one was at the top of a rock. And before I climbed it, I baptized the local people. The second one was underwater near a cursed place. And the third one was at a swamp. But these 3 places were nothing compared to the fourth one where I had to climb this mountain. <laughs> the war climb was an emotional roller coaster. One time I was shocked by the beautiful environment design. Ten seconds later I was flexing my butthole from fear. <laughs> At the top I found a Stonehenge, a waterfall and a red mask. That excited Attila a bit too much. Ah, uh, yes Crane, ah uh, yeah, I'm about to come. I gave the mask to Attila and boom. The final stage of trust. I was finally a certified mother pleaser. I did it! Can you hear me? I did it! After finishing at the mansion, I changed my outfit and finally had some time to evade taxes. Oh my god! I'm Mr. Beast! What's up, kid? Wanna come to my island? But 20 minutes after I left the place, an acolyte told me to check on Attila because he was acting a bit sussy. Yes, I said sussy. What are you going to do about it, huh?
Excuse me? I couldn't find Attila anywhere. I checked the bedroom, the living room and the kitchen. But then I realized that I have forgotten about the one place where everything started. The basement. Oh no, dude, come on. What have you done, man? Yep, he is dead. He thought that sacrificing himself would bring a new life for him. Let's look at the bright side here, okay? I got a new house! <laughs> Nothing can ruin this. <laughs> but little did I know that on day 19, I would get a taste of ultimate darkness. However, day 16 was chill. <sighs> bacon, bacon, bacon. I gave the red mask and the tiller's notes to Jassir and hung out with Bilal a little bit. You know, I just enjoyed the calm before the storm. So apparently a group matching my description, aka Rises Man, occupied the granary and are holding an acolyte hostage. Which is crazy. I was crazy once. Before attacking the granary, I wanted to spy on the enemies first. And oh boy, I saw what I was afraid of. There were too many of them. Hey, that's a lot of folks in it. <laughs> this meant one thing and one thing only. I had to prepare myself. Hold on tight, kidnapped man. I'll be back in just a minute. So on day 17, <laughs> I got to burn. First I wanted to upgrade my buggy pods to military level. So I had to do some looting. I checked out military outposts, abandoned houses, but none of them came close to the place where I tasted the ultimate darkness. So this is the volatile cave from earlier, huh? Heavy volatile activity. Okay. This place was scary as hell. <laughs> ah, so this is what happens if you eat without watching YouTube. And if a place is as cursed as this one. It means that there is high quality loot in it. You think I came here unprepared, huh? I'm a changed man. Why are you running? Why are you running? You want some too? You want some too, huh? Oh shit. Ah! Bam, 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 bam. Oh my, everyone run for your life! Whoa! <laughs> Man, get the fuck out of here! After continuously looting for three days, on day 20 I crafted all the parts I needed. And now, I was ready. Bilal, wait for my signal and if I call him for an airstrike, you are gonna do it, okay? Hey, you poopy heads, it's time for you to die. Can you just stop for one second? As soon as I killed the first guy, I realized something. Hey, you. This will be easy as hell. <laughs> Bilal, I need an airstrike on my position. Bilal. And that's the last of them. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh my god, man. I don't know who did this to you. But he nailed it. <laughs> the faceless dude told me that the bandits didn't know what to do with the Fortnite stuff. And with his last breath, repeated the word lighthouse. But since I'm a self diagnosed procrastinator, I didn't go there immediately. You guys are gonna love this one. However, I think you are gonna understand why. What the fuck did you eat for breakfast, bro? <laughs> this is a freak of nature. And killing it was easier than I thought. <laughs> it only took me 5 minutes and a couple of grenades. After I killed it... Hey, there you go, buddy. Go to sleep. I found the military transport key. Oh my god, oh my god. I really wanted to find out what this card could do, but I didn't want to waste more time and went to the lighthouse. And dude, when I arrived, I couldn't believe what I saw. No way. No way. <laughs> Shit. This is Khan. He's the leader of the bandits. What? After I interrogated Khan, these idiots blew the lighthouse up with a rocket, killing Khan in the process. I survived thanks to the dying like logic, killed all the bandits and stole the wires. <laughs> now I had only 5 minutes to get to the dam. And with this bad boy, I got there in no time. <laughs> I arrived at the dam, killed this guy. Jesus! And went inside to save the... Bro, everyone is dead. But these dead bodies were nothing compared to what I was about to see. Okay. Jesus, what the... 
<laughs> what the fuck? It looks like someone stepped on her on a Travis Scott concert. After talking for a couple of minutes, she gave me two choices. Nuke everyone because the cure is not really a cure and everything would just red or something i don't fucking know or you are gonna love this one <laughs> fight this god awful creature and save my people back home bro this is why i'm here and this is where you come into the picture yes you motherfucker i see you pooping so i created a poll for you guys to vote on which one i should choose and you guys did not disappoint you picked the fight what a surprise <laughs> this is so nice <laughs> bro what have you guys done to me look at this what the fuck? Jesus! Bilal, I need air support! Oh my god! Bilal! The three billion mothers weren't enough for my already traumatized brain, so the game turned me into a viral or something <laughs> and took away all the items that I grinded for. <laughs> then the mother descended from above and it was time for the actual boss fight. It was horrible. You guys knew that I would start crying, didn't you? Uh, what is this? I died so many times. Okay, fuck it, I'm gonna nuke everyone. But then the unimaginable happened. I gathered all the motivation from you guys and killed her. Yes. <laughs> On day 21, I wanted to finish up some leftover business. So I went back to the kids. Alright, alright, alright. Kids, where are you? Killed the big guy and realized how much loot I missed. Gave the buggy to Bilal. I'm gonna miss you, girl. We've been through a lot. Oh my god, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> and finally, I went back to where everything started. I went home. Here we go. But before that, I had to do one more thing for you guys. 